So now that we've gone over some terms and definitions of camera operation, let's look at the camera itself. I mean, this thing can look pretty intimidating, especially in this full studio setup that we have here. But whether your camera looks just like this one or it's a much scaled down, simpler version, they're all gonna share a lot of the same things. Okay, so let's start with the tripod or the base. And whether yours looks like this tripod or you have a studio configuration pedestal or even just something solid that your camera's mounted to, essentially all this base needs to do is keep your camera sturdy and level um, so that it's not shaking around. And if it does that, then you're golden. This one is actually probably a little undersized for this unit on here, but it's what we have and it's what we use. Moving on up from the tripod, you're gonna have something on the top, it's called a head. And these two little locks here, you wanna undo them first and foremost, because that will enable you to pan and tilt the camera without wrecking the gears inside. So that's very critical. Um, never, never move the camera when those are in the locked position. You also should notice some sort of a adjustment knob here, and that will, it, it adds tension so that you can um, set some varying degrees of, of how easily or, or difficult your camera will uh, pan or tilt. Now, sitting on top of the head, you may just have your camera mounted directly to that, or you may have a sled, which is what we have here. Now, this sled is essentially just a frame that will hold your camera in place there, but it also gives you the ability to have a much larger viewfinder, um, which, when you're staring at that for hours on end, it sure is nice to be able to see um, something a little larger, uh, and that's why we went with this type of setup. But if you don't have that, you're gonna likely have some sort of a pop-out view screen on the side, or you may even just have a eyepiece. Um, or then again, you could pop out of one of the video outputs and run a monitor on the side and use that. I've seen that done a lot, and that works out really good for some people as well. Moving on to the front of this camera, you'll see this is the lens. This whole section is, is part of the lens. And this front ring here is uh, your focus ring. And this is where you, you essentially, you can just manually turn this and set your focus. Um, moving on back, you have a zoom control here. And this you can just manually uh, zoom in or out. You also uh, often have some kind of a, a servo here and you can just toggle this and that will also um, automatically move this ring for you. Directly behind that, you're gonna often have what's called an iris ring. And the iris essentially just opens up the eyeball of the camera or closes that down, um, letting in less or more light. So if, it, if the image looks too bright, you're gonna wanna um, turn down your iris. If it's too dark and you don't have enough lighting, you can always open that iris up and your image will get brighter. And then behind that is a back focus adjustment. Some of them have it, some don't. Um, if for some reason your picture is really out of focus and adjusting your focus ring does nothing um, to, to fix it, it could be that your back focus is out and you'll have to set that. Some lenses, um, they may not have all these different uh, various rings and they may actually just have one. I've seen that often. And you might have a little toggle button that you hit between a focus adjustment or a uh, zoom control. And it's just, you, you toggle that button and the single ring does all the features for you. So you may be tasked to stand beside your camera and operate all these things manually, but that is difficult and it's not the easiest way to go. So if you can afford to um, get yourself some, some of these handles and using these uh, cables attached to it, you can then just stand behind the camera and do all of that stuff right from here. Uh, typically on the left side, you'll have your focus and, and you'll just roll this knob and what it's doing is mechanically running up to the lens and it's adjusting that lens. You'll see it, you move this, that moves. Um, on the other side, you often will have a, just a thumb toggle, and uh, that is connected electronically to your zoom controls. So when you just use this little rocker and just roll your thumb one way or the other, it's gonna zoom in or out. And they have various settings on here that you can, you know, if you wanna zoom out or in or flip that around, you can do that as well. So whether you plan to just shoot with a single camera setup or more importantly, if you ever plan in the future to get into multi-camera um, scenarios, you're gonna really wanna think hard about what your input and output options are. And, and that's why we chose this style of camera, for instance, because we knew it had the HD-SDI connection. And to us, that was very important because we could just run a single camera back to our booth. We were running a multi-camera setup and sending this image um, down a single, cam a single camera cable that we could easily uh, you know, put new ends on should they break. Um, that was important to us. And the HD-SDI uh, standard makes that very easy to do. Um, 
We could also, we have the options here uh, just to pop in some SD cards. We could record directly into the camera. That's a great feature um, as a, say as a backup or um, you wanna isolate your camera recording for some reason. That's a great thing to look for. Uh, not all cameras have it, but um, this one did and, and we like that feature. Um, you could shoot component if you wanna run multiple lines. Um, you can also, you can get an expansion pack that sits on here and that has a camera control unit or CCU. And that has a giant cable, which runs back to the um, production booth or wherever you're running that from. And there you can have an operator that sits there, it's called a shader, and they're able to control a lot of these um, functions on the camera remotely. And so they can line up all the different cameras and make sure that they all look the same and you have this cohesive look. Another great thing about the CCU expansion pack is that through that single cable, you can run a ClearCom uh, communication system, for instance, and the producers, directors can then speak to the camera operators over that same thing. So that saves you from running a lot of extra wiring that way, keeps things neat and clean. So that's something to think about as well. This camera has, for audio inputs, it has two balanced XLR inputs there, and that comes in real handy um, you can save that to your SD cards or you can once again run that down your CCU cables back to the booth and then mix that in with your other uh, feeds. And hopefully that's enough to get you started with the basics of a video camera.